Hello again, and it's time for another project. Today we're going to do some router and scroll saw work on these three poppies on this bit of scrap fencing board I had left over from a previous project. The poppies themselves are literally four inches by three inches, and then we've got a leaf for either side. And these two are single ones, this one will be a double one. As always, I've stuck our template on, a bit of painter's tape. I like to use carbon paper and literally draw over the top and this will transfer the image onto the wood like so. That way you can use the template over and over again. If it's a one-off job you could literally just line this wood with painter's tape, spray on some glue and just stick that straight to your wood and we can scroll saw over the top. But I'm going to be using this again hopefully. So we've put our carbon, we've drawn the images on and there we have it. That one I literally just used again and moved it over there like so. So we've got our three, four poppies should I say. One is a double one. And the idea is we're going to cut these out with a scroll saw. Leave them inside the base and then we'll use our router to go over the top. We'll talk about the bits for the router when we get there. And we'll literally lower these down. Lower the petals down, leaving the black section slightly raised. And then we'll lower it down again to go over the leaves. So the leaf will be the lowest point. It will rise up slightly for the poppy and then rise up a little bit just to get the centre of that black. And then obviously we've cut them all out. We'll pop these out, do a bit of sanding down and we'll paint them nice red and green and a black for the centre. So far so good. Remember it is just scrap wood. There's no expense on this stuff. So if it goes wrong, don't worry about it. We can always try again another day. Right, let's get on to the scroll saw and we'll talk about what blade we're going to use. Right, the blade I'm going to use today is what they call a spiral blade. Now the good thing about these spiral blades, they are round basically and they will cut from any direction. On a normal blade, here's a pin blade, this one here. The teeth are just at the front. That's all there is. So when you're cutting, you're going to have to push into them teeth. Turn your wood around, push in, turn your wood around, push in. On these spiral ones, you can push your wood in for the first cut. And then you can literally just go left or right like so. None of this turning and twisting as with a pin blade. So they are ideal. They take some getting used to. I'm quite happy with them. This would cut out with a pin blade or a pinless blade, no problem. But I'm still learning on these spirals, so I'm going to stick with the spiral blade today. This wood is quite small enough that you might get away with actually turning it in the saw like so. But for me, spiral blades. Because I have, I have to use these brackets. and These are adapter clamps. These are for the older machines that won't take pin blade as well as pinless. So you get your spiral blade in between, put your two brackets on. They are a bit awkward to work with. And if I just show you quickly on this, bear with me. Don't normally do this messing about stuff. But you can see there, there's a hook there for those that's got a similar kind of saw and they're wondering how to convert it to pinless. Get yourself one of these brackets. That would literally fit in there. Clip it on the bottom and then you would clip your bracket onto the top like that. And that's as easy as it is. The only downside with this, just take an Allen key. And if you're doing a project that's got 600 holes in it, pilot holes, you're going to have to undo that every time. Today's an easy one. So there's your pinless adapter clamps. Okay, we're good to go. Let's start cutting this one out. Right, we've got that set up nicely. We've got our ping ping to our blade there. You'll notice I've drilled a pilot hole and that's literally to feed the blade through as we're going to cut these out. You could come straight across here, but I want to try and keep this back ground wood as one solid piece the best I can. because We're going to need that for the poppies to sit inside while we go over the top with the router and our router bits to start lowering these poppies down and lowering the leaves down. So that just keeps it more solid 
obviously because we've not made a joint going across. Right, let's start cutting this one out now. Right, we've gone all the way around with our spiral blade on the scroll saw. They've all been cut out nicely. No problem with them. What we've got to do next is put on these CNC bits. I love these. I use these on most of my projects. They are like little pins. And they're ideal for cutting the lines on the line to separate the leaf from the poppy. Like so. They do have a small shaft on them, so you will require a collet, and that's just simply a little tube like that. And the CNC bit slots inside, that now is a quarter of an inch or 6.35 millimeter shaft on it to fit your router. And what we want to do is just show you this one. Set the depth that we want, and we're just going to literally go around that line there. Same on that one. And the same on the twin one what i've done is set a pre-depth marker so we'll set the router to the first line which will be there and we'll go around all the circles then i'll set the to the next marker and we'll go around the outer bit obviously that's a deeper marker the second one so that will lower them leaves down deeper this first mark is not so deep and that will just lower down the poppy to the black center if you know what i mean that's pretty easy that bit this will be a slight little problem on this one because this red poppy will be slightly higher than this one so we'll have to just trim that down a little bit just to give you the, the difference in the two depths but we'll work on that that's no problem right we'll set this up in the router and start doing our first mark which is that one there to do the circles with once they're both cut out with the CNC bit, we'll pop on this. There's some straight metric double blades on this one. This won't mess about. I'll use these quite regular. And then we'll set it to the first marker, which is that one again. And we'll just skim over the top of that. So that will expose the centerpiece that will be slightly higher to that depth, if that makes sense. And then we'll skim down. We'll set it to the second depth. Sounds complicated. And we'll skim over the leaf. So when we're finally done, we'll have the leaf down there, the poppy will come up to there, and the black centre will come up to there. In theory, anyway. Let's set it up and see how far we get. Right, you can see from that, we've gone around our centres of the poppies, up to our first depth, which was there. Now I have to reset the router bit to the second mark, which we've already done, like so. Just find it there, literally just, find, just see it there. And that one's to do the outer edges where the leaves are. Now it's quite a lot is that, it's nearly halfway down, so it might be a little bit too deep for this bit. But we'll see how we get on.
Okay then, we've gone around our centre pieces. We've lowered it down to do our leaves. That was quite deep, was that? Maybe a little bit too deep. But we, we made it, you can see how the cut there, the little bits got through no problem. So far, so good. The only issue we'll have is these two here. Obviously I can't set that the same depth as that, or that will be flush. I just want this one, the back one, just to be a little bit lower. Doesn't have to be too fantastic. Right, we'll get this big boy on now, metric straight bit. And we'll uh, set it to that depth for the first poppy. And we'll skim off the tops of these. And then we'll set it down deep again to our second mark, remember. There, this might have to be done in two bits because that is quite deep to do in one go. And then we remove the tops of the leaves. And remember, because we've left it in our frame, we've got all this to work on. If you try routing on just on that on its own, you're going to be all over the place. So remember to keep the, the framework just to make your base a bit bigger. Right, let's get this one in and start removing these uh, top of these. Right, you can see from that, our little poppies are taking shape. The actual framework broke in the end, but that doesn't matter, we can still use it. If you notice on this one here, I've gone round and just skimmed down slightly. Just so you can see one is overlapping the other one. Right, we've gone all the way around our poppies. Those leaves are definitely better for doing in three stages. I did manage that one as one big cut, but it's too deep. It's quite a struggle for the bit to do, and especially with my little router. So I set it to a depth, skim over, low it down, go over three times I went over that. Definitely a lot quicker and a lot easier. The good thing about these Back in, it doesn't matter what line you follow there, you can go straight over that. You don't have to be too concerned about it, because that's all getting it removed. The only bit to watch out for is when you go around the poppy bit itself. So we can remove this now. That'll get used for something else, we don't waste anything. And there's our, there's our three poppies. There's your double one. And a couple of single ones. You can see the three level effect we we're going for. So that's our eyes point, we drop down to the petals, and then we drop down to the leaves. Now you could route over again if you want to make them thinner. These are just statement pieces to go outside, on the fence, side of your shed, or whatever. So I want them quite chunky. I'm not going to spend a lot of time carving them, shaping them all off. That's just going to be a simple statement piece, once the lovely red, green, and the black goes on. The good thing about a central black, when you come to fasten them to your fence or wherever you're going to put them, I'm just going to drill a black screw straight through the middle of that and hopefully it'll match in with the black surround. Right, let's get the Dremel out, a couple of sanding burrs and we'll just give them these a general tidy up. We're not going to go too fancy with the carving.
Right, they're all nicely sanded now. You can see from that. This is not a carving project. This is this is making a basic shape poppy to go out in the garden. The carving project will be as it is, another project. So I'm not going to mess about with these too much. Easy little smaller ones. I've drilled a centre hole and that is literally for when this screw goes down the middle all the way down you won't even see that and that's just a way that we can secure it like so to the fence you don't have to do that if you want some hanging thing on the back that's entirely up to you guys but once that saw is painted black we won't even see that screw right the colors little painters touch these are ideal for indoor and out nice bright red green for the leave and a black for that center piece Right, let's start painting. Right, that's it. We've sprayed our bit of clear sealant on. It's treated wood already, so you don't need a lot of stuff on. But like any wood, it will age in time. But this just gives it a nice little shine, as you can see. Like so. And the double one through there. We've got our three levels going. Remember, we've gone from the black down to the poppy, the red, down to the leaves, the green. So three different levels, just... Better than just cutting out a standard flat leveled poppy. And there we have it. Notice I've drilled the hole in the centre. Once the black screw's gone in there like so, I'll just throw that in for you now. You're not going to see that at all. He says hopefully. And that will just go on the fence like that. Happy days. Okay, there you have it. Four little poppies. Four inches by three inch on scrap it of fencing wood. Thank you very much for watching.